just replied to a question if he could. Question number two, Thank the Honourable you. Paula Bennett. Uh, my question is to the Minister of Education. Has he seen advice from Education New Zealand which estimates that the proposed changes to post-study work rights for international students could cost the economy $486 million a year, and how many jobs are projected to be lost within private training establishments as a result of these changes? Mr Speaker. The Honourable Chris Hipkins. Uh, uh, Mr Speaker, I was sent that initial advice from Education New Zealand on the proposed changes to post-study work rights for international students. It's important to note the advice did not take into account international students choosing higher qualifications to study in New Zealand as a result of the changes. Uh, it was different from the advice presented by immigration officials, uh, and it did not model uh, for any different scenarios. I did ask, as a result of that, for more robust modelling to be done by both agencies, uh, and we have now received that advice. Final decisions have not yet been made on any changes to post-study work rights. Has he seen the, the report from Aspire 2 that the proposed changes could be a direct hit to the economy of between $1.1 billion and $1.4 billion and result in a loss of up to 1,000 jobs? Uh, Mr Speaker, not only have I seen uh, those reports, I've discussed them directly with Aspire2, uh, who said to me that that was their black hat doomsday scenario, and they, didn't, and, they, and they didn't think the impact would be that bad. However, they did put forward uh, serious concerns about the changes and a number of suggestions. Um, I will consider those and I will discuss those with my colleagues. A point of order, Mr Speaker. Order, um, Mr yeah. Speaker, I seek to um, table a letter that I received today, 1st of August, from Aspire 2 that outlines the very scenario that I've just given. Um, it's a letter did, to me. A, a, letter, a, le a letter to the member. Is there yeah. any objection to the letter being tabled? There is no objection to the letter being tabled. Uh, Simeon Brown. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Is, to the Minister, is the Minister concerned about the submission of ITENs who have said that international students would go to other countries, such as Canada, where they have a, clear, a quote, clear idea of where they are heading, unquote, and is he happy for Canadians to benefit from the $1.4 billion spend than Kiwis? Mr Speaker, I'm not responsible for what the Canadians decide to do, but what I, what I would say is that the government has not made any decisions at this point, uh, and we are carefully considering the feedback that we have received. I do want to be clear uh, that some of the modelling uh, that has been put forward to support some of the claims that are being made about the impact of the changes is completely unrealistic. It assumes, uh, in many cases, that everybody who might be eligible for post-study work rights now takes them up, and that is not true. It assumes that everybody who might no longer be eligible for post-study work rights would not come to New Zealand if we change those settings, and that is also highly, highly, highly unlikely to be true. Has the Minister seen reports that his government's proposed changes could leave Manukau Institute of Technology financially unviable and cause enrolments for private training establishments to fall by 90 per cent, resulting in significant job losses and closure of a number of campuses? Uh, Mr Speaker, it is absolutely correct that a number of our polytechnics, in particular the two large, the two large polytechnics in Auckland, MIT and Unitech, are very dependent on international students at the moment, and that is largely because of the running down of the polytech system under the previous government. Question number three, Dr Duncan Webb. Tanaiko Tamana Fakawa. 